Welcome to another wild trout man adventure, fly fishing for native trout in the mountains of Pennsylvania. It's a beautiful day with Hendrickson's and midges hatching, amazing recently hatched wild brook trout fry, and hungry adult brook trout in the mainstream and a class A wild trout tributary. These native brook trout have gorgeous large spot patterns and wonderful coloration. My photographer friend Matt is here to join the fun and capture some action fly fishing shots and video of this blue line fly fishing adventure. We truly hope you enjoy this episode of Wild Trout Man. Welcome back to Wild Trout Man. Uh, we're out today with my photographer buddy Matt. We're along another Class A wild trout stream here in Pennsylvania. And we have a little, little, little small trickle of a trib. We're going to follow that down to the main stream and get some photography action shots and, and hopefully pick up a, a fish, perhaps. <laughs> nice little stream here. Fortunately, it's really, really dry in the summertime, especially this past summer. It was so dry. Got some bushwhacking to go through here. These rhododendrons are tough. They're great along the stream of playing coverage, but really difficult to cast around and almost impenetrable to get through. I only have a little short distance here, so it's okay. Yeehaw. Water here is really nice. Room to cast. This is looking really pretty. Oh, nice, nice drift and no hits. I'm surprised nothing there. Let's just check my fly and make sure everything's good with that. Have on the trusty Super Adams and Beadhead Pheasant Hill. Good place to start. And we'll see how it goes from there. But just a perfect drift through there. Boy, nothing happening. It's beautiful run through here. How how pretty. It's so photogenic down here, you know. Oh, it is. I thought this would be a good spot. Yeah, I like where I crossed the trail. I'm gonna head up to that next run. So beautiful, look at this. The birds coming across the stream in the morning. Check out that morning light. How pretty. It's really spectacular. Little garden of Eden. All right, I just added a second fly, or a third fly, a second dropper, a second nymph, another pheasant tail, but with a little, a little brighter color, a little, easier to see. Might be some bugs coming off the water here shortly. So pretty the way this light's in the water here. That looks like a nice run right there. Let's see what we could do here. Nice one. Gorgeous brookie. 
One thing that amazes me with these brookies is the size of their spots. Look at this brookie. The size of the spots of the brook trout in this stream are just amazing. Look at that. How wonderful. That is what it's all about. Just an absolutely magnificent native brook trout. Just spectacular. Just a gorgeous fish, Matt. That's awesome. This is a wild trout man moment. This is awesome, man. <laughs> oh. This is great. My buddy Matt brought some good luck. So here's the rig that we have going here. Super Adams up top. First bead head pheasant tail is about 18 inches down. And then second bead head pheasant tail with added Antron flash about a foot down from the, from the first bead head. I added that extra fly to get down a little deeper because the runs are, are deeper here. So that paid off with that first, first hit of the day, the first brookie of the day and just a spectacular brook trout, which I haven't really seen spots that size in, in many of the brook trout that I've caught over the years and in different locations. All right, that was very nice to get on the board with such a absolutely beautiful specimen. A little bit harder to loop your fly out there with the extra tungsten bead there. But you need that to get down. See the water's, it's deep here. It's, it's at least waist deep in the middle here. Rod tip up, keep as much line off that, off the water as possible so you get a nice drift. Oh, I just missed one. There's the spot. Come on, come on. Just a gorgeous morning. Here's a little mayfly hatch right there. Something, something just came off. During this sequence, I accidentally recorded in time-lapse mode, but luckily, I had Matt's footage to finish the scene. But as you will see, I will get baptized as I fall in and my camera goes underwater. My wireless microphone is not waterproof, so after that, I had audio issues with only intermittent audio from my main camera. How about how chunky this brook trout is? Somebody has been eating well. And this shows how fertile this stream is with plentiful macroinvertebrates for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and midnight snack. I'm surprised that there's fish in here like this with all that erosion. Yeah. Yikes, but I didn't miss a beat. The show must go on. <laughs> really nice section of stream here, but look at how this was eroded with the flooding that has come through here. And what we do with Trout Unlimited, we come in and we, we stabilize these banks, plant trees, and we bring in some natural grasses. The erosion here is, it's never a good thing. The, the amount of sediment that comes in, the water just pouring down the bank here. It's, you can see all the way up. We want the trees over the creek to keep the water cool. This would be a good project to come in here and do some stream improvement on, this, on the bank here. So 
So I changed things up here. I just put on a, a classic Royal Coachman streamer and we'll see how that works. Little short strips. Try and vary that strip as you're bringing in that streamer. Wiggle that rod tip a little bit, give that fly some action. Air temp we have is 63 degrees. And let's see what we got for the water. And the water temp is hovering right around 50 degrees. Nice temperature for a trout stream. Getting some, some bug activity. Some small nymphs. Some nice bug life on there. Caddis case. Nice mayflies here. First of the year brook trout. Look at this little tiny guy. Amphibians everywhere. Look at this guy. Creature of the Black Lagoon. After fishing the main stream, I said goodbye to Matt and then worked my way up this beautiful tributary. Hendrickson's are out. There's a healthy stream. Three tails. Beautiful. It's amazing the clarity of the water, so crystal clear and refreshing with a mosaic of colors and textures. The next spot took some maneuvering to get in position. I was convinced a trout would smash my fly if I could present it properly on my first cast. Unfortunately, my first cast was right smack into a rhododendron. Game over. It was time to retrieve my camera and move on to the next hole. Slowly working your way up these streams while in stealth mode is the only way to approach each successive run. These wild trout will bolt on first sight of any intruder. Oh, lost them. It's a beautiful color.
These wily brookies were making me work. I was back to using a Super Adams dry fly with a pheasant tail nymph as the dropper. This combo works very well if you can get a precision cast amongst the many tree branches which consistently jump out of nowhere and ensnare your fly. I was also late setting the hook on several occasions and you generally only get one chance when it comes to street smart stream bred trout. Fly fishing is an incredible sport, but it is also an art found in the beautiful hand-tied flies used to catch these fish, and a science in matching the hatch of the different macroinvertebrates, including mayflies, caddisflies, stoneflies, and other insects. It is also an adventure in the amazing remote locations where many of these fish are found. Add in the zen experience of the casting motion using your fly rod to gently present your fly on the water while you are in total peace and solitude, and you have magic like few other experiences can offer. Beautiful pool. Looks difficult to get into. Look at that beautiful brookie. So nice. Gorgeous fish. Really nice. So picturesque. Right within the moss here. So beautiful. Flies out already. May I present this work of art to you? Just absolutely stunning. Look at that fish. Is that beautiful? Just gorgeous. Boy, I had to work for him. Tough quarters here, casting. That was just a magnificent trout. I had a number of equipment casualties up to this point, but that beauty certainly made it worthwhile. Somehow, I must have sliced my fly line on a very sharp rock while netting this brookie. After releasing the fish, I picked up my fly rod and noticed my fly line was cleanly severed. I'm not sure how it happened, even after watching the video from two separate cameras. But the show must go on. A quick knot, and I was back in action and onward to the next inviting pool to catch my favorite fish, the native Pennsylvania brook trout. There's a beauty right here. Little guy. Wrapped all of, oh, he hit the dry. Got him on the dry. <laughs> First one on the dry today. And he's, he's through the net. <laughs> all right, we'll see you when you get a little bit bigger. Nice little run here. Ooh. Nice brookie. Not sure if he's on the dry. Second guy on the dry. Here's this pretty little guy. Look 
couldn't see where he went. Swarm of midges here. So small, you would not think the trout would be interested in something so small, but they gorge themselves on these things. A Griffith's gnat, zebra midge, two flies that should be in everyone's repertoire. They are just fabulous flies representing the midge. Look at all these midges. <laughs> wow. You think they're like little mosquitoes, but they do not bite. They are friendly creatures and they are a sign of a healthy ecosystem. <laughs> I'm working my... <laughs> Lost a brand new fly line. This is like the second time I'm using it. Feel the second of the, no, it's the third time. Just picked up another one here. How pretty. Can't say it enough. Nice day out in the water here. I had my buddy Matt along, photographer, getting some action shots. Very nice. Picked up some nice brook trout, all natives. Just gorgeous. Scenery here, top notch. So, summary, what an excellent day out on another Class A wild trout stream here in Pennsylvania. Had my buddy Matt here uh, doing some action shots with photography. How fun, really fun to have Matt along. Looking forward to seeing his, uh, his work. We had quite a bit of action today, landed some fish, lost a few. Might have had a hit or two on a dry fly, but it was the pheasant tail nymph once again. Different variations of a pheasant tail today. That was working subsurface, the, the trout were hitting that, that particular fly, and just really beautiful fish. The fish here, the, the coloration, the, the, the spot pattern. How about to find the brook trout fry? Just in, the, in that little, little soft water off to the side, there was probably about three or four little tiny brookies there, just born, less than an inch long. You could tell they're brook trout with the vertical par marks on the fish, and there's the next generation ready to come. Uh, quality water, it has to be quality pristine water for those native brook trout to survive. Especially at that age, they're, they're susceptible to any kind of pollution in the stream. So we know we have some quality water coming down, cold clean water, that's what this is all about. That's what these brook trout need to survive. And in Pennsylvania, so many streams have been damaged through the, the mining industry. That's why I, I'm so proud to be a member of Trout Unlimited and the Middle Susquehanna River Keeper and the Eastern Pennsylvania Coalition for Abandoned Mine Reclamation. What fabulous organizations to help preserve these, these streams. This is priceless stuff. This is for future generations. This is our drinking water, you know. What a commodity to have. What's more precious than cold, clean water? And that's what we need to preserve. These streams and these fish and, and the environment that they're found in. We had a Hendrickson hatch coming off here. The tiny brook trout fry in the stream. Seeing that amphibian, whether that was a frog or a toad, I'm not sure. It, uh, it looked like a toad, but it was in the water. So uh, def definitely in hibernation mode. That uh, he, was, he was in a hypersleep there. 
<laughs> Sorry, little buddy, to wake you up there. Uh, but how cool. And amphibians like that as well. They need pristine water because their, their skin, they could absorb the, the chemicals right through their skin. So they, they also, it's a, a sign of really excellent water when we find a stream like this. Glad you're along for the ride, Wild Trout Man. We'll see you again with our next episode. Thank you for watching.